Good day and welcome to this week's episode of your favorite program, Infrastructure Weekly. I am your host, Abosati Omowi. On today's episode of the program, we will be taking a round project sites across the country. From road to housing and past sector, we will be taking it round the strides of the Buhari administration in bridging the nation's infrastructure deficit. Join us after this break for more on the program. Coming together of opportunity. Uh, this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's effort at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. We take off from the road sector with a promise by the federal government to agrarian communities all over the country of its commitment to ensuring they get better infrastructure, especially roads, to ensure that they evacuate farm produce quickly and efficiently to minimize waste and enhance their earnings. The federal government spoke through the Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, Lai Mohammed in Oro, Kwara State, where the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is currently rehabilitating the township roads. The project is a dividend of democracy to the people of Oro and an attestation to President Mohammed Buhari's commitment to infrastructural development and better life for Nigerians. Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, Lai Mohammed, Flagging of the rehabilitation of the township roads in Uru, Kwara State says the project is a demonstration of the sincerity of the present administration's capacity in marching words with action. He further appeals to the people of the community, particularly the youths, to support the contractor to deliver the project on time. <laughs> We are here to flag up the Oro Township Road. When it was first awarded, some people disputed it, but we thank God that the project is being flagged up. I will now call on the project manager to explain the scope of work to everybody here. The project manager, Niyi Afolabi, explains that the scope of work for the project will involve construction of drainages, bridges, and asphalting of the roads. The project specifies that we start from Nitel Junction to the roundabout. We will do the road and construct a bridge. We will also construct it to Adeboye with a big culvert on the waterway. We are also directed to put culvert where we need to, with a deadline of four months, though we think we can do better. The Ashanlu of Oro, Chief Simon Olayemi, speaking on behalf of the community, expresses appreciation to the federal government for the project and to the minister for facilitating it. We are grateful for this project from the federal government and we also thank you, sir, for facilitating it. We also want to see the specification of the project since we are not sure of it so that we can know where we will join hands with the contractor to deliver the project. The minister also took time to stop by to exchange pleasantries with some elders of the benefiting communities who expressed gratitude for the federal government's gesture. Mm -hmm. 
The project covers the rehabilitation of the Eat Praying Ground, T Junction up to Luke Mansion Junction, and the construction of Adeboe Avenue Road. And it is expected that upon completion, it will help ease vehicular movement in the communities in Oro. <laughs> The federal government has again scaled up its investment in the nation's infrastructure with the award of more contracts for the rehabilitation and construction of new roads in some parts of the country. Minister of State Wand for Power, Works and Housing, Mustafa Babashio, redisclosed this while speaking after the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. He added that the federal government will continue to invest in infrastructure to continue to power the nation's return to the path of sustainable economic development. If you are just joining us, the program is Infrastructure Weekly, where we x-ray the strides of the Buhari administration in the area of infrastructure development. You can get in touch with us for comments, inquiries and feedback on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Infrastructure Weekly and on Twitter at Infra underscore Weekly. We will be back after this break. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash eServices. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC.
Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Thanks so much for staying with us. Now to the housing sector. The National Housing Program has continued apace with the site in Adamawa State now at 90% completion. The site, according to officials of the Power, Works and Housing Ministry, will help in alleviating the sufferings of residents of the state who currently cope with paying the highest rent after those in Abuja in the whole of the north. The coming of the houses, which is in its first phase, will help reduce the stress associated with renting houses in Adamawa State. Welcome to Yola, the Adamawa State capital, where rented apartments are arguably the most expensive in the north, with the exception of Abuja, the federal capital. A two-bedroom apartment cost about 300000 a situation described by many residents as worrisome. Enter the National Housing Program, which, according to officials, will caution this effect and reduce the housing deficit. The program, according to officials on site, will also alleviate the hard trials residents go through in searching for a paying exorbitant house rent. The essence of this project is to address the housing deficit we are experiencing nationwide. So the federal government has decided to embark upon this to increase the housing stock for Nigerians. As you can see, we have reached here almost 90%. And apart from the infrastructure that is starting, most of the houses are almost uh, completed. And even we are even at the process of working out the guideline of giving the allocations. The project manager and site electrical engineer optimistic that will be able to finish the project within the stipulated time with continued funding. What we are trying to do is that to see and make sure we finish it before the deadline. What we have, we have about almost 70 to 65 to 70 percent of fiscal work done here. The one you are seeing now is already being cast with the reinforced. We are only waiting to bring in lateral and sharp sand with our granite. Do you have fears that the houses will be given to politicians who will later rent it out to the public at a high rate? But a task force leader and state controller housing said the ministry is working to ensure the house is accessible to all. Guidelines have been worked out and it's for everybody. Some may, it may, they may even come up with the modalities. Maybe it may be cash and carry or it could be on mortgage basis. But it's for all. The beneficiary of these uh, houses, uh, the, the general public, everybody is entitled. No matter, you are, it's not for, for civil servant alone. Everybody is, in, is, in, is entitled. And the guidelines will be out very soon on how to acquire one. The first phase of the project has seven to six units of three two and one bedroom apartment. The project is now at 90% completion. The public is expected to have access to it, irrespective of status as a civil servant or not, as long as one has a regular and identifiable income. It also has an option of rent to earn as part of measures to ensure that all Nigerians have access to it. <laughs> As part of effort aimed at enhancing the accessibility of the National Housing Program houses all over the country, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria has launched a rent-to-own scheme which will only cover houses with a value not more than 15 million naira and an annual interest rate of 9%, which can be spread over 30 years as rent on the house. Other measures put in place by the federal government to ensure accessibility to affordable houses is the release of 9 billion naira for workers to have access to the 3,000 units of the National Housing Program now available in the first phase before massive construction of more of such houses all over the country. Tweet to us at Infra underscore Weekly and send your views, comments and feedback to us via Infrastructure Weekly on Facebook. Join us after this break for a look at the transmission expansion program of the federal government. Don't go away. Coming together, uh, this is what... Infrastructure 
is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatts of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on channels television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. When the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing announced early in the year its intention to expand the nation's transmission grid with the commissioning of over 100 projects in the transmission leg of the power value chain to enhance supply, Nigerians were skeptical. But now, after nine months, the decision is yielding fruit. We'll present to you in this package a look at some of the successes since the announcement of the move to expand the grid. When earlier in the year, the federal government declared its intention to expand the nation's transmission grid from the then less than 5,000 megawatts to over 10,000 megawatts through the coming on stream of over 100 projects in the transmission leg of the power value chain, many wondered if this is not another case of empty promises. But now, with the year in its last quarter, the nation can stand tall and be proud of its achievements so far. From Odoguyon in Ikorodu to Yola in Adamawa to Jebode in Ogun State and the Niger Delta projects in the transmission leg of the power value chain, power infrastructure has continued to come on stream. Thus, according to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashula, will continue to be the case to enhance the nation's productivity and continue on the path to sustainable national development. Today, we have the capacity to produce 7,000. What is happening is that not all the power plants are releasing their capacity. So the control center is telling power A, okay, we know you have 100, but you can only put on 50. Power B, put on 40 of your 80. Because there is no offtake at the distribution end. So that's the new issue. We have a new problem from not enough power to how do we sell what we have. And 1,000 more is coming. The minister who was speaking on the strides of the Buhari administration in the power works and housing sector said the nation is on a journey to uninterrupted power and called on all Nigerians to be patient but also to do more to protect public utilities. He said what the government has done is a promise to do more than it has achieved in the sector. Ask yourself honestly, are you buying more diesel today than in 2015 for power? You say what? Are you buying more diesel or less diesel? Are you running your generators for longer or for shorter? So clearly it is getting better. The vociferousness with which you complain is the same vociferousness I'd like you to admit. Is it getting better or not? That's all. Let's just honestly admit so that we know that we, we can also know that we are on the right track and go and do more. Well, if you don't loudly tell us that it's getting better, we may not be sure. You know, it's like if you go to the doctor and say, are you feeling better? You are not sure. <laughs> but if he brings out the injection, then you say, no, 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 I'm feeling better. <laughs> so we need to know whether, so thank you. For those driving the sector, it is one that will be taken to its logical conclusion with the delivery of all projects. Transmission has been scattered. Distribution is not working and generation is not working. Generation was only about 3,500 uh, 
transmission was 5,500, and uh, distribution was also about 3,000. As at today, as at December, when the last simulation was done, TCN transmission had a capacity of 7,124. And after that, we have added so many other substations. And generation was 7,000 megawatt. And distribution, if you look at last time, we had a peak distribution was uh, 5,224. So that's tell you how the, the minister has transformed the sector. Some of the projects currently going on in its home stretch is the Ikorudu Shagamu 2 by 132 KVA transmission line, which will help bring stability not only to Shagamu and the Ikorudu axis of Lagos and Ogun states, but to the Jebode Redemption Camp, Mowe Ibafo, and the Aja axis in both Lagos and Ogun states. This project, according to the Assistant General Manager, transmission of the Ebun Zone of the Transmission Company of Nigeria will help bring a lot of things to the table and improve on power supply to the areas. We have capacity to be on two cycles from Shagamu to Ekorodu substation. It's going to increase our capacity, flexibility, in the sense that when one line goes off, the other won't take over. The capacity is in form of the old line is reconductor to carry 900, 90 MVA. But the single line of this new construction is going to be 126 MVA. So we have capacity we call 2 by 126 MVA, which is going to be 254. He added that the project, when it comes to on stream, will double the capacity and enhance stability of supply to its customers in the axis. The community will enjoy better supply. If we have been able to give them supply before, let me put it at 75%, it can go up to 90%, 95%. We cannot achieve 100, but it can go up to 95 In the sense that now, when we lose a line, the whole axis is in darkness, it can't be so again. When we lose one line, we can change to the... It's only the consumption that we will ask people to reduce, not that they will be in total blackout. For his part, the project manager of the contracting firm said the project has now reached advanced stage that will soon require the shutting down of some customers. We are uh, uh, changing the old line, the, the existing old line, with uh, replacing it with a double circuit line on the lattice towers and tubular monopoles. As I said, the entire line has 44 kilometers. As it is now, the completion of this line is uh, around 70 percent. He however promised to deliver a good job that will stand the test of time. Actually now we are working on the erection, erection and the stringing of the conductor from uh, uh, Ikorodo, from Shagamo, Shagamo towards Ikorodo. This line is feeding a substation at Odogunian and uh, another eight companies steel companies, cement factory, which is uh, behind us here. The existing line was one third, a 2 kV line, single circuit. Now we are doing this uh, 132 double circuit, which uh, will increase the energy on this one and the power to supply. Other projects that have come on stream in the past few weeks as part of the accelerated development and expansion of the national grid are the expansion of the Alagbon transmission station as well as the regeneration of some of its transformers and the installation of a geographical information system at the transmission station. The Kubwa transmission station in Abuja, Ijebode transmission station and others. While those in Mowe Redemption Camp will complement the Ikorudu Shagamu 2x132 KVA lines, the two in Ibado and four others in the Okeogun axis of Oyo State.